What's up, Boiler Nation? It is Thursday, July 16th in the awful year that is 2020. But you're watching or listening another to another episode of the Boiler Breakdown Podcast. Got a fun one in store for you tonight as we're going to be doing the first ever Boiler Breakdown Purdue football draft, which will consist of players from the year 2000 on to the present year. But we got some other news we're going to first hit on. And, of course, I'm Tanner Lee alongside Evan Webb and Andrew Eiler. Who wants to take it away with the latest recruiting news, the latest commitment Purdue football got? All you, Webby. All me. Yeah, I mean, Purdue got some awesome news. It was yesterday uh, about 12 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Central time that four-star quarterback Brady Allen becomes the first commit of the 2022 class. Not even done with 2021. We're already getting a 2022 commit, and it's a quarterback, so it's the most important position and really great one to start with because it can really set the tone for the recruiting class. And you can, with a talent like him, you can really try and help sell uh, hopefully other offensive line recruits, especially in the state, to uh, hop on the train. But yeah, he's from uh, southern Indiana, um, gets in southern, uh, it's right near Evansville. Um, so kind of the hotbed of the Notre Dame football IU basketball territory so it's good to pluck one out of there because I think if yeah if it weren't for the pandemic he might have a Notre Dame offer by now and Ohio State they said Ohio something State, like yeah. too Michigan yeah think, uh, sounds like he really kind of hit it off with the Brahms when they offered him as a freshman um so yeah I mean hopefully long day long time till signing day so hopefully uh he sticks it out but he seems like a really good kid yeah, I can never recall a player committing to Purdue before the start of their junior year in football. Before, say Carl Loftus was it right, like at like the start of his. He game. was in a game. Yeah, it was a game. His, that was, so that was early. Yeah, and that was early. I mean, that's still pretty early. Why did I feel like Etling committed early? Not this early, but I thought he was early as well. He might have been early, but remember? I just don't ever remember doing somebody doing it before they even played a game as a junior. Right. Yeah. But some guys just want to get it over with. And uh, like I said, I, like like you mentioned, I think Purdue kind of had the benefit from him not being able to go to camps at Ohio State and Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see Plus, if, you know, something like that happens. I mean, will he camp? Matt? We'll see if he camps at places next year. I don't know. Well, he's going to graduate. He says he's going to graduate early and enroll in January. So, I mean, he's 18 months away from enrolling at Purdue, basically. Yeah. So, if you think of it that way, then he's not – that I mean, it's early. It's still very early, but I mean, he's only got a. And, and he got to take him fact yeah. too. Um, if they don't even have a high school football season this year, at least in the state of Indiana, if they don't, um, other schools won't be able to see him play. That could be a big factor too. Sounds like it's a good relationship with Brian and Jeff Brom, which, as a quarterback, it's should be a, a good a good pull, obviously. So. Well, and I mean, look look at all these wide receivers Purdue has and, and is recruiting right now. I mean, why wouldn't you want to come to Purdue as a quarterback? Mm-hmm. And if you notice that hey. committed, I think there were some, a couple announcements of some high-profile receivers and tight ends who were getting offers from Purdue. So, you know, well, darn well they're going to leverage the, the QB commitment as a way to hopefully reel in some of these higher-profile receivers. So if we can dream, not going to happen, but if we can dream – Rondell Moore stays four years. Would that be his freshman year, Rondell's senior year? Because he's a redshirt sophomore technically this year. So you have Rondell has three more years technically because he only played like three or four games last Rondell, year. Rondell redshirt? They called him a redshirt because he didn't play enough. I didn't know if that was official or not. Yeah. I swear I saw it. I saw somewhere reference him being his redshirt sophomore year just because okay. he's not going to. I mean, like, what did you, Santana, I think you sent us something that he was mocked like. Oh, he's mocked fifth right now by yeah. football network. I mean, fifth. That would be the highest Purdue draft pick since Rod Woodson went 10th to the Steelers. Yeah. Um, Purdue's had a couple so, of their history go number three overall. But I mean, yeah. Unless something absolutely insane happens, he's not last he's not playing another year. The only way the only way I don't see him leaving Purdue, even if is if they have a season and he gets injured again. What about if we don't have a season? I think he's gone. Really? Yeah. I hope I'm wrong, but 
my, my hope is that maybe he wants to at least play a little bit just to show that like he's yeah. back from his injury. Which Could depend on what they say. If oh, well, if there's no season, then okay, maybe you're going to be second or third round pick. Then yeah, because, because I, if you're healthy, you're how you're going to come back after it. So maybe then he would. But I think if they would push football to the spring, I don't think he'd play. Him and other draft guys like Trevor April. Lawrence and yeah. stuff, they just hold out for the draft. Yep. I, so. Speaking of because uh, I heard it on the uh, one of those extra podcast. Um, there was a question, or he brought it up. It was Washburn. I, I like on his name. Right for JC. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Washburn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, not is Jeff Washburn. Mike Carmen. Mike Carmen. Sorry. Yeah. He said Washburn. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah he, he passed away. Remember. Yeah. I can remember. Oh. Mike Carmen. He brought the. Uh, a thought of um, because of the unknown with the season, if we are able to start a season, what about playing your rivalry games first? Just Interesting thought. You, just to get those in, because you don't know. I mean, if this thing comes back around flu season, that's right when you know the bucket game, Thanksgiving, you know, weekends happening. You know, why not get your rivalry games and your divisional games? Done first, and then have your cross division games kind of be towards the end of the season. That's of the interesting. Schedule. Interesting uh, proposal. So, would it be like playing IU on like Labor Day weekend? Yeah, I don't think. It's I, mean, I, think uh, I mean, I would. How the schedule shakes out because right now Purdue would be playing Nebraska the first game of the year, and then have a three week bye. But that's not going to happen. But that's how no, it would look right I'm, now. They were. I've heard a lot that talked about. Kind of the op- same same thing would be of getting the rivalry games, but just mm-hmm. change the schedule, get your division opponents in, so that way you can at least have division winners. Like worst case, if you only play six games or something. And he brought another good point. Not worst case, I guess, is that technically, just because of the way college football is set up, you know, there is no kind of like I guess like commissioner of of college football because you know these bowls are not you know decided by the NCAA it's these bowl committees so they're you know if they want to have a, a college national championship they still could if they truly wanted to it's just interesting I kind of forgot about that that you know really the bowls could pick I guess yeah they could just, if they just you know, if they don't play a single game and yeah the Rose Bowl uh, like we're gonna invite Clemson and yeah Alabama to come play in the Rose Bowl or something like they can't cancel the Rose Bowl yeah. yeah the Rose Bowl parades canceled for the first time since World War II Kind of a bummer to see that, but it, it'll be interesting. I just pray that we somehow get to see Rondell Moore again in a pretty pretty uniform. Not only that, a healthy Rondell Moore and a healthy David Bell on the field at the same time because mm-hmm. Purdue's never seen something like that before. If we play ten games, what's a successful season? Assuming we play all divisional opponents and then Indiana and a few others. So, presuming we play our nine games we're supposed to, then pick up one more. Yeah, yeah. Like, what are you I mean, what we're, we were talking kind of off air, potentially like a Michigan State. It would be no. either Michigan State, Ohio State, Penn State, or Maryland are the four teams yeah. we don't play. Um, and it presumably would be at at a uh, Rossade because mm-hmm. we'd be losing two non-conference home games. Um, I think six and four would be a pretty successful season. I think that'd be very successful. <laughs> Five and five, even maybe. I take five and five. <laughs> yeah, I was just say winning. Like I'd be, I was gonna be fairly happy with. Six I know. I just look at all the offensive talent, and I'm like, they should be able to put up a lot of points. But who knows? Who knows? Hopefully, we should know. I think within the next two weeks. Oh, yeah, Tough yeah. decisions have to be made. It's getting down to crunch time. Yeah, I mean, what that Nebraska game is? What like six weeks away? Seven weeks? As of right now, it's first weekend of September. So it's getting close. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I'm glad I don't have to make the, de- the decisions. You know, it's estimated that if fall sports don't happen, that Purdue will lose anywhere between 50 to $60 million. Yeah. And, you know, that will definitely hurt a school like Purdue, but it will still survive. How about those smaller schools like a Ball State or a Bowling Green? Yeah, I mean, Ball State's not getting probably, what, half a million to play IU. I mean, and Ball State's not a small school by any stretch, but – they don't get the money that you know the Big Ten teams do from. They're not no no TV money, and they're not going to have I mean, big ticket revenue anywhere else outside of the football games. I'm assuming. I mean that that will impact not only athletics, but it'll impact the institution as a whole too. I don't think yeah. non-sports fans really realize that. Just being 
I, with Butler, when my experience at Butler, how much that campus has changed in the last 10 years since the two national championship rounds and moving to the Big East, it's like the whole campus has like turned over. Like it's every building is new. Good point. They're all new. Like that was this not not the same, but I don't know. I mean, it's for- probably almost equivalent, I guess, just because it's two national tournament runs like that versus advertising revenue. Yeah. It's for, I mean, you, I mean, you don't think, I mean, Alabama gets free advertising every year in football. Just, I mean, yeah. you just act like there, but if you want to go and if you're a cool sports fan, you know, why not look at it? Yep. And that's why, that's why Neil Armstrong came to Purdue. Part of the reason he came to Purdue was he saw football. Purdue, Ohio State. Yep. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. That's a good point. So it'll be interesting. I mean, you know, we just kind of, Last month, we didn't. I should have brought this up when we did a podcast. I kind of forgot, but about exactly a month ago to the day, we should have celebrated our one year anniversary of kind of launching this podcast because we launched a year. media in June of last year. So, what a year yeah. it's been! Yeah, what a year it's mm-hmm. been. Uh, so hopefully, we can keep it going for a year too. Hopefully, we have Purdue football to talk about, to talk, yeah. to talk about but uh. That's why we keep brainstorming these fun shows for you guys about once a month to keep our skills intact and uh, hopefully give you guys something to listen to or watch and take your mind off everything that's kind of going on right now for a little bit. That's why we came up with this draft, which a predetermined shuffle has me getting the number one draft pick. Do you want to kind of run through what we're doing in case anyone didn't see us on social media? Absolutely. So what we're going to do is we're going to draft each draft our own individual Purdue football team consisting of players that played from the year 2000 to now. Why I settled on that, I thought that's all in our lifetime, and we at least remember a few players that played in the year 2000. Um, excluding offensive linemen, nothing against offensive linemen, but we just thought it would be really difficult to uh, evaluate all those. We could have done it, but um, that's kind probably- of how it's going to break down. We each draft one quarterback, one running back, four wide receivers, four defensive linemen. So defense tackles and defensive. Did, this, did you say tight end? Didn't say tight end. One tight end. Uh, thank you. Forgot about three linebackers, four defensive backs, one kicker, one punter, one kick return, and one punt returner. So not just one returner overall, specifically one kick, one punt. And we'll hopefully you guys will let us know who you think has the best team. And if you want to play along please comment or um drop something on our twitter or facebook and tell us who you would take from the year 2000 and now um so i will go first evan second andrew third and then andrew starting with the second pick he gets first evan second me third so evan's always in the middle he always number two yep (sighs) it is what it is all right so with the first pick in the 2020 boiler breakdown purdue (laughs) football draft we pumping some booze. <laughs> yeah. Where's the Roger Goodell booze? <laughs> I am taking Rondell Moore. Wow. That's a shocker. I'm, I'm stunned. I wrote him on QB because I thought for sure you're going to take a QB. Well, here's my, my strategy here was. Yeah, let's, let's figure out the strategy. I have never seen a player like Rondell Moore at Purdue. I've seen some that maybe have a few characteristics and abilities and traits that he has, but <laughs> I feel like any of these other quarterbacks I have written down can get the ball out of their hands to Rondell and then he can do the work. So he's just too talented overall not to not to, mm-hmm. to, to pass up on. So Rondell yeah, is my I pick. That. I respect that. Well, I'm not gonna hold anybody, I'm not gonna make any suspense. The person I'm going with I usually try and draft if he's available in fantasy football is Mr. Drew Brees. Figured he was probably going to be one of the top two picks. See, I figured you both, you guys were, when I got third pick, I was pretty happy because I thought you both were going to take quarterbacks and then I would take quarterback. <laughs> it doesn't going to matter. I'm like, I'm going to take my whoever I'm going to take after that because you're not drafting anybody else. But now I have like some thinking. I was like, fine. Okay. I mean, Drew Brees did the unthinkable. He took Purdue to its first Rose Bowl since 1960s. <clears throat> pretty good. Yep. All right. I'm going to take my QB now, I guess. I'll go Kyle Orton. Can't go wrong there. My favorite all-time boiler. Yeah. And then I'm going to go Ryan really? Kerrigan. again. Ooh, Ryan Kerrigan, sure. Superman, going defense. Yeah. Yeah, can't go wrong with either of those guys. going to be real stout on my defensive line. But both of those guys are game changers. So Andrew's off to a hot start. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. That uh, hmm. threw me for a loop. Um, 
Let me go with Mr. K1 short. Ooh. That's a good one. A little down on my board, but that's a pretty good bet. Yeah, KK is very – guy probably didn't get enough respect at Purdue than he deserved. He was like my third defensive line. Yeah. He was my second. Yeah. Well, I can wait till my last pick. Exactly. Is See, that's what, I was, that's what I was hoping was going to happen. But no, then- I'm going to wait on quarterback, but these D linemen are flying off the board. Yeah. I could go with another stud wide receiver and just make my wide receiver <laughs> core really good. Or I could take a top running back, linebacker. Yeah, keep the back. They get only only one running back. So if you take the running back, then like it, I could take a stud tight end. Yeah. Oh man, the decisions. Kicker. I think you mean stud kicker. Yeah. I got a few kickers down here for options. I put three. Uh um, I've got six. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm gonna go to the over Defense line as well. I'm going to take Sean Phillips. Yeah, okay. I almost, right. I, almost, I almost drafted him. That's a good one. Man. The den of, the den of defensive ends is just – Yeah, Sean. I mean, Sean talked right, about that. had a heck of a career at Purdue. Yeah. Three different jersey numbers he wore. Yeah. Came to Purdue as a tight end from New Jersey. Interesting. I did not, did not know that. I'm full of random facts. Mm. New Jersey, huh? All right. <laughs> okay. All right. What's your second? What's the first pick of the third round, Tam? Oh yeah, it's me again. Crud. Oh, God. Um. Unprofessional. I wasn't prepared. Boo. Yeah, I don't know it. Um. I'm gonna go wide receiver again. Wow. Bold. I'm gonna take Taylor Stubblefield. Nice. It's mm-hmm. a good pick. Let's go. One of my favorite Purdue memories of all time is 97 yard touchdown at Notre Dame. Did the boiler up and got a flag. Beautiful. Yeah. Nowadays, that wouldn't be a touchdown. Because the uh, unsportsmanlike, they call it. I believe so. I believe. Didn't I they change no it idea. a little last year? I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. Stupid either but, way. Didn't Rondell, didn't Rondell flip on his like first touchdown or something? What am I thinking of? Marv. Marv. At Notre Dame, and he got a penalty flag. I wasn't thinking Rondell did that. And Danny Hope said, there's your one. Because it was just yeah. for touchdown like two years. Like, in like five years. Yeah. Rondale goes and he just. I know. He just hands. I was like, wait, I said that. I'm like, no, he just hands the ball to ref. Mm-hmm. Okay. I feel like I need to take a wide receiver, <laughs> but I'm very torn between two. And one of them is simply because of recency bias. I, I think I know the two. Do you? I think. Maybe not. Tell me who you think the two are, and I'll tell you if you're right. No, you can't do that. <laughs> no, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> All right. Um, screw it, Mr. Reliable David Bell. Ah, uh, he was one of the ones oh. I thought you were thinking of because recently, oh. recently by yeah. he does have about maybe the best hands I've seen at Purdue. He, yeah, he's probably a little too early, but I aggressive. He probably wouldn't have been there the next yeah. uh, round f- five. Four, five. I was listing my wide receiver wow. draft board. He was number two on mine just because I. Oh wow! He's. I mean, just because of. I feel like every time you throw him the ball, he catches it, and. Yeah. I figure with someone like Breeze on the ball, I mean. That's true. So. I mean, Drew had some good wide receivers, mm-hmm. but he didn't have any David Bell. Yeah. I'm gonna stick with defense and go Stu Schweiger. Oh, I love it. I was hoping he'd be there on the next time. Purdue's <laughs> all-time career uh, leader yeah. in interceptions. interceptions. And then I, I feel like I need to go give give Kyle somebody to throw to. We go John Standiford, my first Purdue jersey, probably my favorite Purdue jersey, besides my white Drew Brees. Mr. The- Reliable. That guy would get for all four yeah. years. Wide receivers are just flying off the board. Yeah. Just like fancy football. Good, good, yeah. Um, I'm gonna follow Andrew's lead here and make that defensive secondary dangerous. I'm gonna join the posse and get Bernard Pollard. I was gonna say you're going with the big hitter. Yeah, the big NASCAR fan. I don't know if you guys have seen that on Twitter. He's a big NASCAR fan lately. It's pretty cool. I'm not. 
All right, all right. Well, I'm going to stick with the defensive backs. I'm going defense. Ricardo Allen. Solid. I should have hit defensive defensive backs really hard because I have I, I don't feel great about my list. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just kind of slim towards the back. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I have some like very recent guys. I'm like, yeah, I don't know, but whatever. All right, Tan. All right, and then, man, guys, I'm going wide receiver again. <laughs> this is a guy I really like. I think he was very underrated. A guy that NCA absolutely screwed over. Oh yeah, Matt wow. Smith. That's a good I one. Him, I had him high on my board too. And he was good in 09 as a junior. He was really good. Second team all Big Ten, I believe. Yeah. That's earlier than I expected. I got three of my four wideouts already, so I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Okay. Um, I love this player. I'm going to take him. He's on the board. Mr. Corey Sheets. Oh, great pick. He is an Instagram follower of the Boiler Breakdown. So, great pick. Got my running back. All time uh, Purdue rushing touchdown leader. Good I CFL career. My, my offensive line is going to be just stacked. So give yeah, yeah, of course, all three of ours. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's Matt Light across the board. Yeah, <laughs> Dennis Kelly. Oh yeah, touch Mister Touchdown, Mister Playoff Touchdown, mm -hmm. Dennis Kelly. All right, Andrew. Okay. I'm going to go uh, defense. I'm liking Andrew's defense. <laughs> Go Rob Ninkovich. Nice. Good pick. And then we're going to go wide receiver. We're going to go Dorian Bryant. Good pick. Probably the most elusive wide receiver prior to Rondell Moore I'd ever seen at Purdue. That's what, I was surprised you took Keith Smith over Dorian Bryant. Well, I already got Rondell. Yeah. I mean, so? I got a big body. You would take I gotta two get a big body. Gotta get a big you would body. take two Rondell Moores? Sure, I would. I mean, we got Marcellus Moore now. He could be another Rondell Moore. Are you sure Keith Smith is a big? He's That's bigger a... than those two. <laughs> he's bigger than Dorian. And he came Rondell. in as quarterback, so I think he's got yeah. Yeah. three, maybe. Okay. Oh, I would um, say he's like six foot. Man. I'm I think you're wrong, man. He's six two. Okay. Okay. Hey, give me a hint of who you're going to take. What position you're going to take your next two picks, so I can decide this <laughs> or not. Um, you know what? I'm gonna go defense. I'm going to go – I'm going to update my board here. I'm going to go with Mr. Cliff Averill. Ooh. Good. Nice. Nice. Get a little defensive end there. Was he end or linebacker? He was an end. He, he, he got drafted as a linebacker. Yeah. But he was – yeah, he was an end. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the ends and linebacker. I couldn't remember. If, trying to, I thought he went the other way. I thought he was linebacker at Purdue to end. He, I think he started as a linebacker two years, and then they switched him. Yeah, okay. He was double teamed a lot his senior year. Okay. Well, I am going to go defensive line as well. I'm going to go with Mike Neal. Nice. When I was a manager, Rick Smig, who was the uh, offensive lineman on the team, said that was the toughest guy, including Ryan Kerrigan, that he ever had to guard during practice. <laughs> Second round pick by the Green Bay Packers, but his pro career never really took off. And then I'm going to go defensive back because I only have one, and I feel like I really need to get some early here. Yeah. I'm going to go with Jock Reeves. Dang it. Mm -hmm. I thought about him over uh, Ninkovich last time. Yeah. yeah. Underrated should. boiler who had a nice pro career. Too. I should have done that. I've been thinking about drafting this guy the last two rounds, and he's a guy that scared the crap out of me, Mr. Niko Kudavides. I love that guy. Yeah, good one. I thought about taking them too, but I was hoping the linebackers would fall a little bit. I haven't had a linebacker. I just want to get something up the middle there. Yeah, good choice. 
I'm going to go Anthony Brown. Good choice. Nice. And then Jawan Bentley. Ooh, I like it. I'm going to go with Frankie Williams. Ooh, Frank. He was a guy when he got the ball in his hands, he could score. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason why. <laughs> yeah, that's a good reason. <laughs> All right. Defense uh, backs flying off the board. Right? Oh, just getting slim. Yeah, well, I'm going to go linebacker. I haven't taken a linebacker yet. Between two guys. I think I know who you're going to pick. I'm going to take Landon Johnson. Oh, not who I thought. Ooh. And hmm. You know, I'm gonna get my running back off the board here. I'm gonna go Ralph Bolton. The 2009 version. Nice. Yes. Is what yes. I said. <laughs> I said the, the, the version that ran all over Toledo and yeah. Oregon. Yeah. yeah. I almost oh, – I don't want to give it away because there's no other running backs off the board. So, or there's one running back off the board. But So you can right. tell me who – yeah, because then it's no, just – No, I'm not going to spoil it. Yeah, I, I, took I put a Ralph guy. Golden and then I put in parentheses 2009. <laughs> yeah. I almost took a different guy. But. All right. I need to give Bree someone to throw to. Uh, this guy is probably one of my favorites, especially in the last 20 years. And a guy who didn't really get a chance to show what he had in the NFL, Mr. Dustin Keller. Ooh. Interesting. I thought you were going the uh, wide receiver, how you started yeah, that. Yeah. I keep forgetting about yeah. tight ends. I love the tight ends. Tight ends so. He was a beast. Yeah. First round pick by the Jets, and then yeah. blew his knee out on the Dolphins. Zipri's had a good tight end in college, so why not give him yes, did. another one? Hmm. I'm gonna go with uh, Justin Siller. Get it over with. Yeah, we know it's coming somewhere. <laughs> He's a little He's down. A receiver I forgot about though. Yeah. Um, he played in 2000, so we can count it, I guess. Vinny Sutherland. That counts. That's who I thought Webby was taking. I'm like, oh, so I'm familiar with this guy. Okay. When you when you that was I thought you were taking Sutherland as well. Yeah. Nope. That means Vinny. See, this is interesting because Vinny, Dorian, and Rondell cannot be taken out of reserve turners now. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be interesting. Okay. <laughs> well, you were gonna you were gonna take uh, Tanner. You took Rondell as your punt returner, right? Not as a <laughs> receiver. <laughs> yeah, I want to clarify that. Oh, is it my turn? Oh, yes. it? Wait, Andrew did two. Oh, wait, no. I no, need... he only took many. Yeah, he's got You're one. Right. I need to do one more. Um, Anthony Spencer. Mm. Good, one. good one. Good one. Very good pick. Yeah, he slipped on it. Man, I should take it. I don't know where Mike Neal. Oh, well. I like Mike Neal. I like that one. I, I got a beast on the right, end. I, end had end them, down the middle. I, had, I had them right next to each other. Get some receivers in there. You know what? Let's repeat some history. Holy Toledo, Seth Morales. Whoa, I didn't even have wow. Seth down on my list. Yep, I won. Wow. <laughs> it, it's the nostalgia, right? It's the yeah, the, the one game, the one play. Uh, yeah. He, I mean, he, he, had both board, connections. But... he has connections to both these schools that we mm -hmm. are wearing. So, All right. Am I up? Yes. Okay. I'm going to round out my uh, wide receivers. I'm going to take a guy that I think was very underrated at Purdue and doesn't get mentioned enough among the good wide receivers. That's Greg Orton. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. I was I was between him for my fourth. I was, he was one of my I was considering. So Rondell, Stubblefield, Keith Smith, and Greg Orton. I can live with those four. Not bad. No. And then, yeah, you can got the quarterback whenever now. 
Yeah, I can. I'm might as well just yeah. wait till the yeah. end. Um, I want another good linebacker. Go with Joe Odom. Okay, that's a good one. You can you can do that. I'm gonna. I just did. Okay. Go defensive back here, Brandon King. Okay. Okay. Haven't written down. Good one, Webby. He was on there. Yeah, about him. Me. Short NFL career. I forgot about him. Good one. Thank you. You take back the Cincinnati comment about <laughs> Seth Morales now. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I, am, I mean that's one of my favorite Purdue memories of all time. But uh, I just don't know what he did post Breeze. I guess I don't know enough. I, I, I looked at his stats and he was. I don't think he was ever like the best wide receiver on the Purdue. Team. No, I, I knew he wasn't the number one. Oh so, yeah, on the field. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Stanford kind of became the number one option in Stubblefield number two yeah. for a little while. Yeah. Good one two punch. I need a slot, I, uh, need a slot guy. I'm going to go with DB because I'm running out of yep. Antoine Rogers. Nice. Ooh, I, I liked him a lot. Yep. And then. Yeah, him and Stu, you got two good safeties there. Yeah. And I'm going to. I'm going to go. I'm going to pair the, the big middle linebacker, Juwan Bentley, with Marcus Bailey. Love it. Good one. Uh, Killer bees. Mm-hmm. You got Bentley, just the tank in the middle, and Bailey, the athlete, going sideline to sideline. Hmm. I will say the receivers I have left, I'm not super fond of. I'm not not fond of. Oh man, I have like ten wide receivers left, buddy. I only need one, but I've got like ten. We can we can go over who didn't get drafted at the end that we yeah. think should have. But... Like I said, I put like eight quarterbacks on here, and not like no. Fun, fun to discuss. Yeah, I got three more, three written down, and I honestly am going back and forth on all three of them. Believe it or not, so we all know who you're going to take. You're going to take the greatest backup Colts quarterback ever. Maybe. Um... He changed NFL history forever, in my opinion. <laughs> Honest to God, if he was any better, they would have won one more game. Colts would not have got Andrew Luck. Broncos would not have got Peyton Manning and would have been stuck with him. Demo. Curtis Painter changed in NFL history, in my opinion. He didn't start all those games, though. I didn't like Orlowski. When they put Orlowski in, they won two of them. <laughs> I mean, if they would have replaced him earlier with Orlowski, Orlowski would have won another game, and the NFL history would have been different. Why was he so bad in the NFL? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Around, yeah, around for a while. Uh, a little bit. With the Giants a little bit after that. Yeah. And the Raven for a little bit too, I think. I kind of remember what the Raven. Right, right, pick is in. The pick is in. About time. Shut up. <laughs> Caught a lot of balls and a lot of bad teams. But he made the NFL. D'Angelo Yancey. Uh, great that's freshman year, great senior year. All yeah. Between, but I like it. I was going to throw him in as my fourth wide receiver, Webby. All right. Yeah, his, his sophomore year, he only caught like 20-some balls, I want to say. He just was a non-factor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe that was his junior year. I don't know, one of those years. No, I think he um, – I think he didn't he catch like – I think he caught like eight balls like one year. I thought he was like eight. He was good as a freshman and then bounced back as a senior. So, mm. so I am up, right? Yes. Yes, and you have two picks. Yep, and I am going to go with another defensive end, a part of the din of defensive ends, Aiken Odell. Mm, nice. Good one. I had him as a linebacker. Was I, yeah, I, 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 I had him as a defensive line. He played a little bit of both, but he I is a member of the Den of Defensive End. So. <laughs> See, he was the one I asked about. Yeah. That's right. Today, in our text. And, okay, clarification on defensive backs. Do I have to take two corners and two safeties, or can I just take four? That's what I didn't I was doing, but you don't I know just, what I mean. I don't know. Honestly, I didn't know Antoine Rod. I thought Antoine Rodgers was a cornerback. I didn't know that he was. Okay. I well, I'm taking this corner, and I'm going to – well, actually, I'm going to play Ricardo at safety since he's a safety in the yeah. pros. There you go. So I'm taking the other corner on the opposite side of him during his Purdue career, and that's Josh Johnson. 
Dang it. I had, I had him down there. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a sleeper that I was going to take. Yeah, I, I thought Josh never got the credit he deserved. No, I mean, he, he didn't get a lot great. of kicks, but he was, he was good. He was a good dude. Yep. Dang it. Okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah, I'm happy because that made Webby mad. So I'm like really happy at my pick right now. <laughs> I'm going to try and get him next round. We're cool. We're cool. I'm going to take a defensive lineman, defensive tackle, Craig Terrell. Ooh. I don't like think I had him down. I feel really bad because Craig was a good player. Yeah, you I got him. Yeah. And now he's mine. I have a lot of – we have a lot of good defensive linemen. I have a lot yeah, of good defensive did. linemen written down. Yeah, I'm going to finish out my defensive line just because I like this guy a lot. Jake Replogle. Oh, great. Um, yeah. Great underrated pick. Would have been an NFL if he wanted to play. It. If he wanted to, yeah. And a good player for a lot of crap. Teams. Yeah, we got we got the best proposal, right? Yeah, easily. Damn, I like Andrew's defense. Yeah, he was a good one. That's a good one. I, I forget about him a lot. I like your defense. We have good defense so far. We're all going to have great defenses. I, mean, right, I should. I mean. <laughs> Who's next, Andrew? Oh, uh, Yes. That would be me. Um, I'm mm, between two defense. Two. I don't know. Maybe I'm just remembering him too fondly. I'm going to finish my cornerbacks now. Josh Okonye. Oh, I like it. The one year. From the what? one year. Yeah, Wake Forest kind of helped that first. It was the first year of Brown. Yeah, I like that. I, I, like that. I like check that. on the last name. <laughs> Yeah, that's O-K-O-N-Y-E. That's it. Sure. Good one. I need another linebacker, so I'm going to take – make sure this guy's in. He's off the board. Gilbert Gardner. Dang it. Ah. Good one. I wanted to round out that early 2000 defense with three of the four actual linebackers. Johnson, Gardner, Nico, or who had Nico? He well, he does buy a note on Johnson. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm going to round out my defensive line, and I think every defensive line needs a little crazy in them. <laughs> this guy's got a lot, of, a lot of crazy in them. That's Matt Mitrione. <laughs> I didn't even think about him. I didn't know any- NFL with the Giants. <gasps> See, I didn't know much about him at Purdue. I don't know much of his I didn't career either. other than his I MMA that. career after. Yeah, it. you need a little crazy. I'm going with Matt. Me I and Mitrion. I love it. Is that your second pick? First pick. Uh, that was my first, first pick. My second pick, I'm going to round out my defensive backs. I'm going with a safety that I think had a pretty good Purdue career. Um, a really good story since he started as a walk-on. That's Landon Feicher. Hmm. You yep. could do that, yeah. I went with three of the defensive backs that I worked with as a manager <laughs> as def- as the de- at the defensive backs. So eh, maybe a little bias there. know what i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it <laughs> rounding out my defensive line with george carloff this I, I was gonna say somebody's gotta take carloff yeah. yeah promising Dan future ahead of that guy and cliff on opposite ends i like it yeah and you got kk up the middle yep who else nico, is nico back there i got him and craig Oh, Craig Terrell and then yeah. on up the middle. Damn. Andrew hit it too. Okay. Andrew's not there. I got two. Um, I'm going to finish my linebackers with Stanford Kegler. Good, good one. one. Played for I, was him, I was between him and Gilbert last round. And then I could wait. Um, I'm so, I'm, I've got like three running backs that I'm between. Well, you only need one. I know. I'm gonna go with I 
screw it. We're going Desmond Tardy and finishing the wide receiver. Oh. <laughs> I didn't have him written down. I almost wrote really? on my board, but I did. Uh, uh, I mean, that, I mean that's not solid. Good. Yeah, solid. Yeah. Not many picks left. No, there's not. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe for me. Yeah, I think six left. Yep. All right, I'm going to round out my receiver just because the well, Lord knows I don't have many left. I can't think of that. I have like eight left. Move with Antavian Edison. Good pick. He was good. I wanted him as my returner. Well, suck it. I might have to take punt returners next just because I don't have <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am uh I'm gonna round out my linebackers with Joe Holland. I had him on my board. Nope, oh, good one. He's a dentist now. <laughs> it's another one that we asked about that I asked about today. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my kick returner. That's where he do it. God dang it. Wow. Fastest running back on Madden 2021. Well, you know, he got Daryl Hazel used him well. Oh, they hope didn't use him either. I, mean, yeah, I know. He, they tried him at wide receiver and he just, that wasn't his position. He should have been a running back the whole time. All right. Is that your, you, you, you're done, right? Yes. I, I picked okay. um, Mostert and uh, Joe Holland. Okay. That's right. I'm going to take this linebacker because he's the last linebacker I have listed, and I will be playing. So, uh, Mr. <laughs> Who was that? I'm sorry. Anthony. Hey, good. Oh, I forgot about him. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Oh, there he fullback. Can you come in? Can you fullback or running? Yeah. Running back. Like R42 fullback. Yeah. The dreads. Loved it. The, and he wore the uh, butterfly. Yep. Yes. Yeah. You don't feel very often anymore. That was awesome. Had a fake pun, I believe, against Michigan. <clears throat> uh, Justin Siller, Desmond Tardy, hook and ladder game. I think he had a, the fake pun he ran quite a ways that game. If mm -hmm. I, my memory serves me correct. I don't know. That sounds right. I don't know if it was that game, but I do remember. <laughs> he had one at one time. I think it was that yeah. game. <laughs> like 75%. Oh, sure. Sure. Um, all right. I'll take, I'm going to take Gerard Void. Ooh, nice, nice. That's my running back. All right, not the one I thought you were going to take, but he's solid. Who did you yeah. think you take? I thought you take Joey Harris. I was between I didn't, I didn't have Harris, him down. Montreal Lowe, and Gerard oh, Boyd. I think he, he's like seventh on like Purdue's like career rushing yards or something. Joey should have been on that 03 team. That was so good. I mean, buddy. Academics. Where did I see that? Um, and then I'm going to take my kick returner because he's the last one I have listed, Akeem Hunt. Good one. Yeah, I think him and Moster were kick returners. Yeah, very, very fast. Yeah, some really fast guys. They like to run a lot of reverses and fake reverses with those guys. Okay, Gerard Void is 10th on Purdue's all-time rushing yards. That was wrong. Honestly, I can't remember how well he did at kick returns, but uh, he was on there, so I did O.J. Ross. O.J. Ross, okay. Yeah. Forgot about I him. I had him and Raheem returning written down for kick returners because I was kind of drawn a blank after that. So Same. I'll go over a few others I had after yeah. when we're, we're done selecting because I don't want anybody to take one as a punt returner. You guys are going to take my punt returner. <laughs> I can already say that. <laughs> I'm between two guys on punt returner. I've That's seen them both yeah. live take touchdowns to the house. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. So I got. I know one of them because I only know one guy. I think I'm who's... taking the one that took a touchdown at Notre Dame to the house in a loss, and that's Anthony Chambers. Okay. You could do that. I'm gonna do that. I don't remember punt returners at all. So same. So it's still my pick, right? Yes. Yes. I have a kicker, punter, and quarterback left. Who's your tight end? Oh, I forgot tight end. So I have four picks left. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm going Tim Stratton, tight end. Really? Okay. okay. Uh, John Mackey, that was junior that year. He's offended. A jump pro after his junior year and came back, didn't have that good a senior, never made the pros. <clears throat> Did not know that. Yep. 
Oh, Andrew hasn't gone taking tight end yet. Okay. No. I have not taken tight end yet. I picked the tight end who I wanted to pick but didn't. I had three of them written down. One was already gone, and, and this other one who Andrew's going to take. So. I had four written down. I have like seven written down. And one of them I frankly forgot about, but then when I wrote them down, I was like, oh, I like them a lot. My turn? Yes. Yes. Okay, I need to eat. Between two guys, and I don't remember how one of them did. I'm gonna take him, Tory Williams. Okay, oh, I, had him, I had him. Yeah, I had him down. See, good pick. I forgot I about him. him. I like totally him. About him. Okay, I like that pick a lot. I'm gonna finish my punt returners with Aaron Valentine. That was the other one that I know took one to the house against Northern yeah. Illinois and I'm lost. He had a fumbling yeah. problem, but when he didn't fumble, he's a pretty good return. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to take Travis Dorsch as my kicker. As your kicker, not as the punter, huh? Didn't he? Wasn't I don't know. What did he win? What he did, won the uh, Ray Guy Award as punter his senior year. I thought he was a really good kicker as well. No, he he's, he was probably produced best both they've ever had, but yeah. he had a lot of controversial moments as a kicker, flipping the student section off and. The, <laughs> In the win against Michigan, which he missed like the 29 yarder, two minutes. Fine. Of that. I'll take him as the Ray Guy punter then. But, um, and he had a tough right. game against Georgia, but no, we're good. And, and, and he punted for the Bengals a little bit. So, but good punter. Right. He couldn't go wrong with either selection. He's my punter then as the Ray Guy award. I didn't know okay, he was. He's your punter or your kicker? Yes, he's my punter. Okay. All right. Because yeah. I, I feel better about other punt, right. other kicking options. All right. Okay. I know the rules of this. <laughs> All right, so I need a punter, kicker, and punt return. You need a punter, kicker, and quarterback. <laughs> the latest the starting quarterback has ever been taken in a draft. <laughs> well, that's not true. Well, no. I guess for this, yeah, never mind. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with my kicker. It's going to hurt me not to pick this, this other kid, but this one, he's on the board, and... He's the reason we won the last time in Madison. That's Mr. Ben Jones. Oh, good one. Well, I'm taking. I'm getting on the board and taking the kicker then too. Uh, I'm going to take the. I think the kicker who had the biggest leg in Purdue football history, at least that I saw, and that was Carson Wiggs. Mm-hmm. You think bigger than Spencer Evans? Uh, I think so. We saw. I think he was. I was pick Spencer. Yeah, separately. I think he was a better. I don't know. Spencer Evans is really good as last year. Yeah. Well, I mean, Wiggs kicked for three and a half years. Mm-hmm. We, we, he came in uh, halfway through his freshman year and replaced Chris Summers. So. Yep. And then I got a punter and a quarterback. I'm going to go ahead and take a punter. Uh, this guy was dynamite as a freshman and pretty solid the rest of his career, and that's Cody Webster. Ah, dang it. He's now a cop in the state of Pennsylvania, I believe. Literally, it was going to be my next pick. There's another good punter on the board. That's unfortunate. There's a, couple, there's a couple punters out there. There's a good punter that did a little bit of everything at Purdue. Yeah, I got a couple. I got a couple there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take Spencer. Hold on. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. You're going to take a kicker. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just ready to be get my two picks out of here and take my trophy and go home. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I can tell you who I'm going to take because it's both kicker and tight end. You've already taken, so. I'm going to take as a punter, Mr. Joe Shopper. Did a little bit of everything. Can throw, run. Yeah. Spencer Evans, put him on the board. Took him over Chris Summers, huh? Yep. And JD Dellinger. Okay. Yep. He had like he was he was really good his last year. Uh, and then tight end Bryson Hopkins. Yeah, buddy. Was your other one Gabe Holmes on your list, Evan? No, Charles Davis. Oh, Charles, I had Charles Davis. Davis, right? Yeah, okay. Kyle was up there. Sport football. athlete. Yeah, the basketball team. <laughs> other multi-sport athlete, you know, that almost put on my my tight end list. Patrick Beatty. <laughs> wow. 
Uh, That's all I'm gonna uh, say. Wow. This uh, hey, he had one catch for five yards, I think. I couldn't even tell he had a catch, so I I was going through like seasons, and he was he showed up in the stats. Doing a punt return now. My last pick. Uh, Tanner, I want you to guess. You can guess who I'm gonna pick. Danny Anthrop. No. Um, punt well, returner. I had written down or taken, so uh, he wasn't a very good punt returner, but he was fast. <laughs> Oh, BJ Knopf. Yep. Uh, good old BJ. Yeah, he was quick. Injuries just derailed him at Purdue. Mr. Irrelevant. Yes. He's going to be a quarterback. Justin Siller, come on. No. I do have three written down. I, I, I think I'm going to pick a quarterback. I like all three of these guys. I know. Robert Marv. Nope. Marv. Nope. I, 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 I mean, no. Um, Going with David Blau. Really? Wow. <laughs> I thought I would have put money on Elijah. No. I, I, I mean, I wish I, I mean, <laughs> would have stayed healthy. I mean, I'm a huge Sinclair fan, but Blau is probably recency, by, recency yeah. biased. Curtis, all the talent, just couldn't beat one of the big boys. Blau was a gamer against the big boys. The other guy I also thought about was Joey Elliott. Yeah. Um, I, I, had, put, yeah. I was going to put – if. I had a breeze. We're gonna put Blau. Yep, he he was just a gamer. So yeah. uh, no, no Brandon Hans consideration. <laughs> nope. No Turbush consideration. Yeah. No Turbo nineteen. Appleby Yetling. Turbush was the guy that one did not put on there. Yeah. Rob Henry. I had Rob Henry on my list. But who who are some of the guys that you're surprised that didn't get picked, or some that you had written down? Um, Ryan Bader. Yeah, I had a bunch of defense. Bruce Gaston, Bruce Gaston, Gaston Alex Russell, McGee, Ray Russell. Edwards, Brandon Villarreal, Lorenzo Neal, Lorenzo Neal, Jalen Robinson, all those. Yep. Yeah. Nick um, Mondek. Wide, wide receivers. I had Danny Anthrop down as the only other one that didn't get picked. I had, I had Terry Wright just because of the speed. Yeah. I had Kyle Ingram. Yeah, yeah I thought about him. He would have been a red zone threat. Nice red zone yeah. threat. Still won Lywin just because of his Notre Dame game. Other DBs I had, I had David Pender. Yeah, Pender. Anthony Brown. Brown. Anthony Brown. He I went. took Anthony Brown. Oh, he did? I took Anthony Brown. Oh. Like, like, like fourth overall. Like My, fourth. Bad. My bad. My bad. I had Albert Evans on there. Oh, good ones, yeah. yeah. And then I had just <clears throat> Z-Bias, and I couldn't think of another defensive back. I had Corey Trice. <laughs> yeah. I thought about them, like Cam Allen, Corey Trice. I'm like, they're going yeah. to be good. Yeah. But, like, linebackers. It's had, the draft. It's all about potential. Jason. Had, who'd you have? Jason Warner and Dwayne Beckford. I had Dwayne Beckford, uh, Will Lucas, Sean Robinson, George Hall. Who? He was the starter um, on the 04 team in 05. George, George Hall. Yeah. Not familiar at all. He had an interception against the Wisconsin fumble okay. game. Yep. But uh, TJ McCollum. I thought about Didn't him. Didn't have him down. That's a good one. So let's go through these. Let's go through these rosters. I had a kick returner down that nobody mentioned. Jerome Brooks. I forgot. I had him as a running back. I remember the name. Oh, it was a. Oh, it was Notre Dame? At Notre Dame. He was That's a third right. straight back, and then he I transferred thought. after a sophomore year. Who had one against Penn State? Was that Bryant? Yep. Yeah. And so did Mostert. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So but everybody else I had written down, I mean, Chris Summers is a kicker. Yeah. Yep. Besides Tom that, everybody else. Uh, Tom Tom well, uh, running backs also had Joey oh. Harris, Markel Jones, DJ Knox, DJ Knox, Mostert Hunt. Jason Taylor, Brandon Jones. Yep. Rod Void. Move on. Mark L. Jones, DJ Knox. Did you say DJ Knox? Yep. Yep. I didn't I didn't have uh King Doru or uh Xander mm-hmm. Rad written down though. Not yet. Oh. Not yet. Yeah. But yeah, going through the roster, my uh, quarterbacks are David Blau, running back is Ralph Bolden, wide receivers Rondell Moore, Taylor Stubblefield, Keith Smith, and Greg Orton, tight end, Tim Stratton, defensive line. I got Sean Phillips on the end, Mike Neal, Matt Mitrione up front, and Aiken Adele on the end. Linebackers, I got Joe Odom, Landon Johnson, and Joe Holland. Defensive backs, I got Ricardo Allen playing safety, even though he was a corner. Also got Landon Feicher at safety. J- Jock Reeves at corner, Josh Johnson at corner. My kick returners, Raheem Mostert. My punt returners, Anthony Chambers. My kickers, Carson Wiggs. And my punters, Cody Webster. Got a lot of Danny Hope guys, I just realized, but... 
<laughs> not a coincidence. All right, my team quarterback, Mr. Drew Brees, running back, Corey Sheets, uh, wide receivers, David Bell, Seth Morales, D'Angelo Yancey, on Antavian Edison, the tight ends, Dustin Keller. Defensive line on my end, I've got Cliff Averill and George Karloftis. Up the middle, I've got Kwan Short and uh, Craig Terrell. It's pretty nasty D line. Yeah, I love it. Uh, <laughs> linebackers, I've got Nico Kudavides, Gilbert Gardner, Anthony Haygood. In the back, I got my safeties are uh, Brandon King and Bernard Pollard. Corners being Frankie Williams and Tory Williams. I had those positions correct. Brandon King was a safety, right? Was Brandon King a safety? He was a corner. He was. Tory was a safety. Tory Williams would be a safety. <laughs> Frankie would be a corner. Got those mixed up. I don't know why I thought Tory was a corner. Kicker Ben Jones, so we can beat Wisconsin finally. Uh, punter Joe Shopper. Kick return OJ Ross. Punt returner BJ Knopf. No. I've got uh, starting off with King Neckbeard, Kyle Orton, uh, running back Gerard Void. Kyle will be throwing to Stanford, Dorian Bryant, Vinny Sutherland, and Desmond Tardy. A lot of speed there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But then, and then Bryson Hopkins at tight end. Just keep adding the athleticism. D line, though, on the ends with uh, I think Ryan Kerrigan and Anthony Spencer. Ninkovich was a DN, but he's going to play a little bit in the middle with Jake Rapolo. Those are all the ones. <laughs> um, <clears throat> linebacker, Jawan Bentley, Marcus Bailey, Stanford Kegler, Stu Schweiger, and Antoine Rogers, the safeties, Anthony Brown, Josh Acuna as my corners, kicker, Spencer Evans, punter, Travis Dorsch, kick returner, Akeem Hunt, punt returner, Aaron Valentine. A lot of speed. A lot of speed. I think we're going to have to put a poll up on the Boiler Breakdown Twitter next few days to see who uh, Boiler Nation thinks had the best team. Because I think we're all going to say we have the best team. So, uh, One last thing I wanted to bring up to you guys before we call it a night, call it an episode, was Tom Schott, who works for Purdue Athletics, he had an interesting post the other day. Um, I didn't really, he doesn't work for Purdue anymore. Oh, he does not work for Purdue. I misspoke. I thought he still did. I don't think, so. I don't think he does. Okay. Um, I, mean, I could be wrong, but I, I want to say I saw them saw something online that like he didn't work for them. Anymore. Well, he tweeted a day ago that he had a wonderful uh, back deck visit with Arnett Tiller. It saddens me that Joe has not received the recognition he deserves for turning around Purdue football, taking us to the Rose Bowl, and reviving the athletics department. Oh, and he went 10-2 and two in the old Olga Bucket games, boiler up. That brought a uh, com- a few comments and one comment from Dave uh, Weggle. I'm sorry if I mispronounced his name. Photo said, this photo in bronze, I will campaign tirelessly to get this done. Let's make this happen. They both mean so much to Purdue. They have ha- have they have to have a place outside of it. And he is talking about this photo right here. That's a pretty iconic photo around Purdue. Mm-hmm. What's your guys' thoughts on his comments? Uh, would you like to see a statue built outside of Ross State of some sort, maybe of this or of something else? Or does a landmark or a building of some sort need to be named after Tiller like it is? Uh, Molenkoff, Katie. <laughs> Etc. Lambert, etc. I sorry, go ahead, Andrew. Go for it, buddy. I think at the least something's been named after him. At the very least, I know there is a whole, which is again brought up the whole discussion again about the field, um, not being named Joe Tiller Field. Um, but I also get in the end, you know, you're trying to run an athletics department, and when you're trying to do these renovations, sometimes top dollar is. It means a lot more than you know nostalgia say, but um, I think at the very least that um, I'd like a statue. Um, I mean, it's hard. I think that one would be cool. The yeah. one that would be cool with the rose, everything. Or maybe not necessarily like a. I'm trying to think of not. I guess it would probably maybe still consider a statue, but not like a full, you know, not like a full John Wooden statue that we see outside Mackey, but something like that picture. Um, somewhere it would be cool i mean because again they both mean so much and breeze has his name on a building already um i just thought it was interesting <laughs> just because he worked in the athletic department tom shot did so it's like i mean i don't know obviously i've never worked in the athletic department especially at a power five conference school um but i 
feel like if you wanted it, you maybe could have tried and leveraged it, which maybe he tried it. Maybe he did. I, I would assume he did, but who knows? But I feel like you had that, you know, that, uh, I mean, he was, he's been in the athletic department for a long time. So you know, you built some credibility being there that long and hopefully your words carry some weight. Um, but you'd think that if you wanted it, you could have tried to make it happen, which maybe he did again. I, don't, I have no idea. Um, but I thought it was just interesting that it, I don't know, but I definitely agree that there needs to be something with Tiller. Yeah, I'm all for a statue. I know they got the Tyler Tramp gate with the plaque yeah. and everything, but I think a statue, uh, I really like that idea of that one of him when Breeze that kind of quote after being in Indiana to go to Pasadena. Um, I mean, you're talking about Purdue's all time winning head coach, a guy who brought Purdue back from the depths of hell, really, in college football terms. I mean, this program was just running to the ground, and then he made 10 bowls in 12 years. On 80 plus games, um, produced a lot of pros, mm-hmm. um, a lot of successful guys off the football field. So, yeah. All while not making Jeff Brown money. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and he never probably had the full backing as he should have of the athletic department. Um, had to fight for everything he got um, as far as like assistance, salaries, facilities. And, um, and he won. And I think Purdue fans were getting tired of winning. We kind of got greedy winning mm-hmm. seven to eight games year and we haven't even been close since so um, hopefully jeff brom will turn around i think the uh potential is there but there's work to be done um i mean i, I still kind of don't like how purdue and joe kind of ended things but it is what it is i uh, but i definitely think something needs to be done to remember his legacy yeah, I hadn't thought much about a statue before. I, I really liked, and I kind of thought it set up well when they were naming the stadium or naming the field. I'm like, okay, this is slam dunk Tiller Field or something. Um, but I get it. But then seeing that picture, I never really thought of that as a statue. I think that would be, if that would be really cool, because then you'd get Breeze in there as well, and it'd be the whole Rose Bowl. Yeah, that, I think that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Yep, and I mean, um, and Molenkoff. One time I had a buff or like a, a buffer outside the uh, uh, the building. I don't know if that's still there or not, though. But and hopefully, maybe I mean, Lord knows when these stadium renovations actually happen, they've been going on. But you hopefully think if they add something to the stadium that something gets named. But yeah, I think that's, that's actually, the thing. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, part, part of the problem is too is that no one. I mean, aside from Tom Shot, I feel like no one in the, in the athletic department was around when Tiller was coaching. So it's hard to, I mean, especially if, they, if they're not pretty people, you, I mean, it's hard to truly kind of comprehend what he meant. I mean, obviously people can tell you, but, you know, if you didn't live through it and, you know, had the joy of some of those games and all that, um, I feel like that's why maybe, maybe it's my, why it might be harder to get them to do it. It's why I wish it would have been done sooner. I'm so, I mean, it, I don't know if that was a Morgan Burke thing or what. Um, I'm not really sure, but yeah, it's, it's too bad it didn't happen sooner because it really should have. Like, because with like Cardinal Court, the uh, Purdue men's basketball practice court, that was money donated from Brian and his wife, right? I would have, have to assume. Yeah, because I mean, nothing against Brian Cardinal, good player and all, pretty legend, but probably not up there with the ranks of somebody like Joe Tiller as far as Purdue sports yeah. history. Yeah, I agree. So. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe, maybe. I think something will eventually be done, but mm-hmm. hopefully it's sooner rather than later. I think it's going to take – I mean, I think it may take something like a Drew Brees to to really push Babinski or, or whoever it may be. At the a group of former players or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, which there's a lot. Large Lots. Amount, yeah. A large amount of them. Because I know I mean, Kelly Kitchell will go for bat. Yeah. We'll go up the bat for him. I mean, so. Taylor had a great relationship with, with Orton. I mean, we have a very fantastic these, relationship yeah, with Orton. Some of these, you know, especially the quarterbacks, um, you know, some of these legends, Kerrigan, and some of the the, yeah. the later ones that played for him. Um, yeah, it's gonna take. I think it's gonna take a group effort. Mm-hmm. Any other thoughts before we wrap this up about anything going on, Purdue world? Not really. Just mm-hmm. Open. Hope we get to see some football here soon. Fingers crossed, and uh, hope everybody enjoyed watching or listening to this. And um, maybe we'll do one, assuming we have a basketball season. Maybe we'll do one for basketball right before the season. That'd be fun. Oh so, boy. 
Thanks again for listening and watching and uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. If you haven't already at boiler break pod, subscribe to the podcast, wherever you listen to your podcast at and give us a rating and review on Apple podcasts. We really appreciate it. And as always boiler up hammer down. Boiler up.